Okay, guys, uh, I would like, uh, hey, I would like to hear from everybody. I have some ideas, some notes that I want you to, uh, to be aware of. But, so guys, we're starting. Yeah, I just feel like we need to slow down in this book and understand what's going on. So, what I'd like to do is, the last time we did this, uh, I don't know, I, I'll just, I'm going to record everybody that everybody spoke. Um, so, anybody want to start? Uh, okay, why don't we start with these? Go ahead. All right. Um, I gotta think of something to say. That's right. good. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, think about it. I thought it was interesting how Holgrave is like—he's a revolutionary, and he like he talks about how he doesn't think we should like focus on the past. But then he tells Alice like this entire story. Oh. Or no, he tells um Phoebe, Phoebe, Phoebe. that like he investigated the entire story with Alice and like um and like uh, the history of the malls of detention so just in the past. And he seems like he really cares about that. But it's like it kind of seems weird because he just talked about how he doesn't think we should focus on the past. I, I, again, I don't notice anybody writing notes. I, that was an interesting point. You, you, I have not heard that. I didn't think of it. I think we should take some notes here and learn something. All right, shh. Guys, go ahead and do this. You're going to miss more. All right, so I thought that was a good point. He hates the past. Which we can, uh, he says things like, we should break down buildings and make every generation, uh, every generation have to build their own house, not inherit their father's house. And even said families should break up after 50 years. You know, we should just start over. The family should no longer exist. It's crazy ideas like that. And yet the story takes place in the past. That's, I don't know what to make of that yet, but that's a really good point. All right, Gail. I thought it was interesting how the judge looks exactly like the portrait that they have in the Which, house. Of the current? Yes. And how they're very similar. How are they similar? Um, just in their like facial structures. Um, All right. But that, they would naturally resemble that because they're in the same family, true. but there are some other things that also, which well, is a good point. I remember them talking about like how he was kind of like, he was like weaker. Right, he's a weaker version of the other yeah, guy. And also right. how the thing with the throat, how yeah. um, it sounded like blood. Yeah, because of the legend, when, when you know you might have a cold or something, and maybe just that kind of yeah. physical condition, it people that know him, you know, think about the legend, which they just think is a legend and maybe not even true. That's a good point. Yeah, Taylor. Right, particularly Judge Pinchon. I hope you've picked up on that. He's he's really mu very much a hypocrite. That interesting scene when he tries to kiss uh, Phoebe, who is a niece, not a niece, a cousin, um, and he ends up, you know, like ready to kiss her, and she pulls back, and so he sort of it's an embarrassing moment. And at that moment, his face it says that benign, friendly expression on his face changes. You, you know, it's it's important that we know what Kayla said is correct. But she, we also need to back it up. That's really, really important. I know I'm looking for that. So the details, don't, don't dismiss them. They are actually what I will be looking for, and they'll be looking for. So she made a good comment. We can back that up. We can give an example of it through um, through that silly situation with uh, with Phoebe. Uh, all right, thank you, John. Uh, I thought it was interesting how for Holgrave, he chose to like he like hypnotized Alice and like manipulated her that way. But when he um, that was that was mad. Oh, 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 that's not me. That's not me. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 but then when uh, he hypnotizes like uh, or like kind of hypnotizes. Maybe he doesn't right. like manipulators in any way. He like, doesn't. Yeah, he right. doesn't, but he does to Alice. Right. That's what is what conclusion can you draw, John? About Holgrave's character. 
<laughs> that he's like, well, you like build a relationship with those students who are like caring. And it would be cruel to yeah. manipulate somebody. So, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Good job. Yeah, Elizabeth. Um, I thought it was interesting how Clifford was kind of afraid of Judge Pynchon, but I think it'll be cool to see the backstory of that yeah. and what led to that. You will learn all that, and you don't know why. Good he's point. deathly afraid of it. You're right. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, hey. <laughs> What's so funny about that? That's, That's a legitimate question. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that. He has been in jail for 30 years. So uh, it, he literally he literally just got out of jail. And so um, the answer to that, not not by nature, but he, his experience in jail has, has altered him. Is that why he's in jail? Is um, the Finley. 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 I was just right. getting to that. That's a logical conclusion yeah. to draw. That's a good point. Uh, <laughs> that's a good point. I just found it interesting how BB thinks like L1 and everything. Let's start over. You guys missed the wrong, you're already missing the wrong point, you know. The point that we're making, and that was a good point, the point we're making, you know, you, you cloud it by, you know, all the other comments. Like, we forget now, what he said, um, and I want to hear what he thinks. So, Tyler? Um, I just find it interesting how Phoebe makes everything go around for better. Like, yep. Pepsi Bud and Clifford make the garden start to go again. Like, just her persona and the, just kind of rubs it off on everyone. Yeah, and, and again, I would just add to that if you would say something like that in a paper, which I hope you would, because it's a really good point, I would need examples. Like, um, first of all, Clifford. Clifford gets younger and younger. You know, it's almost like he's being born again, literally from uh, being older to to a um, into a child. It even describes him as a child later. Um, and you mentioned the garden, the house. I mean, she may just be a really good interior decorator, but she, she had, there's something more to that. And she makes Hepzibah. It works out for her time. Uh, I thought it was also good how, like, Her name means light. She kind of lights up the place in a sort of figurative way. Um, but she's also prettier, and it, it comes right out and says that even Hepzibah knows that with that scowl and everything, she's not very attractive, and that he doesn't like to look at her. He doesn't like to look at his own sister, but he likes to look at this, this young girl. Um, it says a lot about the fact that he is, um, he loves beauty, literally. That's not just someone who's a, a pretty girl, but he likes uh, the garden. He likes he likes things that are beautiful, beautiful music. Doesn't um, he live simply for like pleasures and beauties? He is at Sabarite. Remember, I gave you that word the other day. S Y B R I T E. I didn't. I forget it. A Sabarite is is someone like that, kind of like a hedonist, someone who who lives for pleasure, sensual pleasure in particular. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting how like Phoebe rubs off on that. House kind of also rubs off on her. So she becomes just really gloomy yeah. and she's really energetic. And then by the time she's leaving, uh, it says that she's like, she looks like less energetic and like wiser, but the house has become like younger and more energetic. I like the way you put that. She rubs off on the house. The house takes more of her character and the people in it do, but it's a burden that she has to bear. And she, if she's considered like an innocent person, as she is, she can't imagine the judge until she's around him. She can't imagine people that are respectable. She can't imagine them to be evil. So she always assumes the best. She's kind of like an idealist. She's, a, she's innocent. But she's been changed, too. That's a really good point. Um, she's not the same person she was. And not in a bad way. Um, but it has kind of... It's kind of been a burden for her to bear. Um, I thought it was interesting how um, petty Matthew Maul was. How what? How petty he was. Petty. Um, and how um, how he, like how he treated Alice when like he hypnotized her, and even how like made her like serve him at like his wedding, and then he only felt bad for what he did after she like he already killed her pretty much. Yeah, 
Okay, wh why would you use the word petty? Um, remember why he's that way? Why is he that way? Because like he's not he's not doing anything. He's not gaining anything from this. It's just it's just hurting someone to hurt okay. someone. Okay, but what are the reasons why he would have any well, animus he, toward them? Because um, the Colonel Pension took uh, he took the land. Right, but I see what your point point that is kind of uh, it's it's cruel and it's pointless. Like what does it do? It doesn't get his house back or anything. But now he can kind of get back at him. Right, that's a good point. Yeah. I thought it was interesting how like the curse was still alive. The house? No, the curse. Oh, the curse, yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of a, a city, I mean, a town, yeah, it's like a little town legend. Uh, I thought you mentioned the house. One thing I noticed in that chapter when, um, and you need to get the names, it's Gervais Pension. I'm still not quite sure. Um, Matthew is the grandson, so Gervais Pension would be about the same age, and maybe he's the grandson of the Colonel Pension. But I don't know if you noticed. And I don't have it in front of me, but the, the house at that time, he has lots of children, lots of servants. It mentions that the house was a bright, happy place. Now, by the time we get to the current occupants of it, it's, it's empty, it's dark, uh, it's sad. But even, even just like two generations from the original curse, the house hasn't fallen apart yet in terms of its, its, uh, its aura and, and and the life, so life over a period of a couple of centuries does deteriorate. Uh, Julia, what do you think? Um, well, in my opinion, I honestly That's what I think for. that Clifford's kind of creepy with Phoebe. Uh, just the way her book describes the way he feels towards her. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if that was the intention. Uh, I mean, looking at it from modern eyes, it does sound. I can understand why you would say that. Um, yeah, I mean, he he's kind of a creepy person until you realize he's pretty harmless, and you will, because he is. Um, but I can understand why you'd say that. Uh, yeah. I'm a little confused. Is this meant to be historical? Because uh, it's got all like the hypnotism and curses and all sorts of stuff like that. Is it meant to be like? Um, you see, I think that's the beauty of Hawthorne's style. He, he gives it enough credibility by throwing in things. And even, even mesmerism or hypnotism is sort of a pseudoscience. It just feels confusing and a little bit muddled. Well, maybe it doesn't work, but I, I think what he's doing, and I think he does it pretty well, he, he adds these touches of science, pseudoscience, philosophy, um, to make it seem reasonable, at the same time, he weaves through it. Some people say there's a ghost in there. Some people say they saw this. You know, so he never acts, the narrator never tells us definitively this is what caused it. He tells us what other people say. And so he makes it believable that maybe there is a curse. Um, let's see, um, Madison. Um, kind of what Julia said, I thought it was. What? Kind of what who said? Julia said, I thought it was interesting and creepy how close she Yeah, I mean, that's, that is a weird thing. His sister loves him more than anything, and yet he doesn't, he doesn't love her enough to even appreciate her appearance. Um, you mentioned the garden. At one time, at the end of one of the chapters, the narrator compares Phoebe to a flower. He loves flowers. He loves things that are beautiful, even flowers. And she is, she is that way. So I have a few, few notes I'd like to share with you. Um, so I would suggest that you write these down and figure out what day it is and what time it is. I don't have a lot of time. Uh, go back to, uh, to chapter eight. So if you got your book open, we'll just, we, we only have four minutes. So. Um, at, in the very first page, and I don't have the book in front of me, but I don't need it. Uh, it describes a little boy, and I just thought this was uh, this is the kind of thing that I don't know, big picture, 
but it says the urchin. They always call him the urchin. That's kind of a street street kid who lives on the street. Uh, the urchin buys a whale cookie, and he comments that reversing his experience with the prophet of Nineveh. Um, and think about it. It's pretty clever. He eats the whale rather than in the Noah story the the whale eats Noah. And then he, he also said calls him he's like Father Tom. Uh, he has an all devouring appetite for men and things. And I thought, in other words, all these these cookies he's eating are shaped like animals and different. They're really clever. And uh, he says that that's like Father Tom. That is a theme of the book. This book is about time and the ravishes of time and the ancestors that you had that have sinned in certain ways. And, you know, we all inherit things, literally DNA from our parents and so forth. But this book is also about inheriting some of the bad stuff that fam you know, families, in this case, the, it can be cursed. Families can be cursed by, by somebody who was a bad dude, bad guy, and he infected, in a way, the entire family. Everybody thinks, um, I mean, it's kind of a silly point.